This week, let's take a look at the chords that you will find as a blues guitar player, and then we'll see the common places and the common progressions that they are used in. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome, friends, to this episode of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitar player that you always wanted to be. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe to this podcast and check out the description for all of the links from the show. Well, here we are. This is our second week into the Black Friday Cyber Monday. I uh, made something really cool for you. It's my chord elevation toolkit. Talked about it last week. This is something that started out as a little mini course, and I've added a ton of stuff to it. And it's it's all revolving around chords. And if you're struggling with making embellishments and doing all sorts of cool things with your chords, I think that you would love to have this course. This is the core of my chord embellishment training. I've been doing this for students since before, since a long time ago. And I go through each open position chord on each string to show you what you can do for each string to add sparkle, shine, and a bunch of interest to your plain old chord playing. If you ever heard a chord progression with single lines running through it, you thought it was cool, or if you ever wondered how to make uh, just a boring old strumming chord sound like a lot of fun. This is how you do it. I go through the whole thing and then you get to play along with some great examples that show you how to use all these embellishments in your own playing. I know this is a good training because I have done it over and over and over again and I have seen the look on countless students faces every time I teach it and now you can grab it uh, I've also packed it out with a ton of bonus content that's very related to the main subject. You'll get my double stop embellishment training. You'll get my chord symbols demystified training. You also get my smoother chord switching training and my basics of chord and scale system training and also a bunch of backing tracks too. It's awesome. I'm excited for you to get it. And we still have the Black Friday Cyber Money special going on. It was originally $49.95, but I want everyone who listens to me if you're a regular listener, I want you to be able to do this. I want your chords to sound great, and I want you to show off a little bit. Plus, hey, if, <laughs> if you sound great, I'm looking good, so it's a good win. So go ahead and grab this today for an even $7, an odd $7, even $7 packed out. Head on over to playguitaracademy.com forward slash chord elevation toolkit. Way back in episode 21, what is that? Like 2018, I'm sure. Maybe maybe it was not, but it's, it's right around in there. I, I did an episode and this was a fun episode for me because I had been playing up to that point. Most of the work that I've been doing was in blues. I was playing in blues bands and blues festivals and those things. And so this is something I could share from that it was the best blues chords for guitar, episode 21. This was an overview. And it was a really good episode for those who aren't familiar with the blues and how it's different if, for, like, say, you're a rock player, if you're coming at it from folk music or country music. Uh, blues has a little different way it does things. And since then, I've been wanting to do more with that. I've been wanting to go deeper than I could with that episode. I wasn't doing video back then, and now I am, which will help a lot. You can always jump over to my Play Guitar Academy uh, YouTube page and check this out, see what I'm doing. I'm going to describe it like I always do for the, for the audio one as well, too. But I wanted to take a look at these chords in an actual blues progression so you can hear where they are and, and, and where they're used and what they do to the prog progression. So you might want to use them in your own stuff, too. Uh, so today I'm going to introduce the basic blues chords for those who haven't heard them. Then I'll explain the more advanced chords and then I'll explain where and why they are used. Finally, I'll play along to a track where you can hear the difference between the basic blues and then some of these more interesting chords thrown in. OK, so let's take a look here. What are the basic chords that you'll find if you play a bunch of blues songs? Well, there's the old faithful major chord and minor chord, just, you know, triads, right? You'll, you'll find them a good bit, especially in acoustic blues, uh, but pretty far, you know, pretty early on into the blues, dominant seventh chords kind of took over. You find them in most blues songs. 
Um, you also hear those boogie patterns too. You have um, a root note and a fifth. So it's kind of like a power chord. These are boogie patterns, are kind of like the power chords of blues, right? And that fifth note, so in this one we have an E, I'm using the open E string and then my B note. That's the, the fifth degree of the scale from E. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we'll hop back and forth between the fifth and then the, the major sixth. And I, I have a little rhythm going on. It came from Boogie Woogie Piano, the left hand of what a Boogie Woogie Pianist would do. And there's all sorts of different things you can do with it, embellishments and those things. And you know, in, in, in blues, you'll hear it a lot, a lot slower. <laughs> so that's something that you'll come across along with the major and minor scales. And then there's the dominant seventh chord. So let's see, let's pick a key for today. I'm gonna pick the key of C. Okay, so we're gonna play a little blues in C today. Uh, the dominant seventh chord basically has a root, a third, a fifth, and a flat seventh. Okay, if it had a major seventh, it would sound like this. A little too, a little too pretty for that. For blues, we want the sound that the dominant seventh gives us that wants to go somewhere. It doesn't sound rested on its own. It wants to, it wants to, to, to walk into some other harmony. The chords that you'll see in the blues commonly used, you'll see that the E7 shape one, this one I'm playing at the eighth fret, is the bar across there. You'll also see a C7 um, in open position as well too. This looks like a regular C chord, but then you put your pinky on the G string at the third fret. So like an open position C chord. Um, Born on the Bayou, use this chord. It's, it's in a lot of different stuff. Um, uh, I think um, Mustang Sally uses this chord as well too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's in a lot of different songs and it can move around. And then you'll also hear this C7, C dominant seven. Um, and this is, looks like an A7 shape. It's barred at the third fret here. And then I've got my um, fifth fret on the D and the B strings there. What's really neat is the C dominant seventh chord that's like an E shape, the one that's based off the low E string. When you go to your four chord in blues, it's right next to where that a7 shape chord will come in. In this instance, it's an F7, and that's the four chord. So C7, F7. You don't have to move your hands very much. You just hit those bar chords and they go back and forth. And in fact, you could do the the open position one, the one that's like um that, that's like born on the bayou. It's right there in the same place too. So you don't have to move your hands very much at all if you go through all of these uh, common blues chords. But there's another one that you'll find a lot. The minor seventh chord. Let's do a D minor seventh here. That would be a two chord in the um, in the key of C. The minor seventh you'll find in Thrill Is Gone is all over the place there. Um, you'll find it in Stormy Monday, and that basically is a root, a minor third, a fifth, and then a flat seventh. Uh, and we can put them all sorts of different places. Minor sevenths that you'll find. Uh, the one I love to play is for C minor seventh. Let's do that one. It's at the eighth fret and it's kind of barred across. I'm playing the E string and then the three middle strings, the D, G, and B. I'm not playing the high E or the A string. Uh, and so I'm using my second finger for the low bass note and then my third finger to bar across. Uh, it's a neat sound. Uh, you can also play a C minor seven at the third fret that's, that has a, an A minor type shape. Uh, a minor seven, really, with your pinky removed there. And a lot of people like to hammer on that. Uh, the, the two notes that you press down it gives it a little bit of an embellishment, a little bit of movement there. Um, and then you can also always play the big um, E minor seven bar chord starting on the low E string as well, too. And for that, I'm at the at the uh, eighth fret, and I'm just putting one finger down other than the bar, and that is the third finger on the 10th fret of the A string. So we have this one, and we have this one, and then we have this one here. So they each have a little bit of different sound, but they all function the same way. So these are the basic chords that you're gonna find 
in a blues. But today we're going to go into uh, a little bit more of the advanced chords that you will find. And these are the things that stump people. You might be learning a blues song from a tab, or you might be trying to learn it by ear, but then you're starting to hear things that maybe you're not familiar with. So we're going to take a look at some of the more advanced chords. The first one that we will get to is the ninth. They basically function exactly the same as a dominant seventh chord. So if you see a C9, you can also uh, use a C7. The ninth is just decoration there. It functions the same. So any place where I have a C7 chord, I could add a C9. And it will do the same thing. It will work exactly the same way, but it has a big difference in sound. So here's this, dominant 7th. Here is C9, which is dominant 7th with a D note if you're in the key of C. So if I have a C dominant 7th, if I take one of the C's in the chord and raise it up two frets, I get this sound. It reminds me of James Brown. Uh, it reminds me of funk guitar. It reminds me of blues. And so here's just a big C dominant 7th. This is an E7 shape up at the 8th fret, barred all the way across. And I just take my pinky and play two frets up on the on the high E string. That adds the ninth way up on top. That's kind of a prettier sound. I like the one here where we take the the C dominant seventh that you play in open position. The one I said is in bar, born on the bar by you. <laughs> and then we'll take the first fret on the B string and move it up to and just bar across there. And then you get your James Brown ninth chord sound too. But there's another ninth that you hear a lot that you may not know what it is. And it's because it doesn't really use the root note. Uh, but you hear it all the time. Does that sound sound familiar to you? Right? This is something you might hear in um, Stormy Monday. And a lot of different uh, songs too. So basically what I'm playing is at the... Um, if you find the C on the low E string, that's at the 8th fret. Um, I'm starting on the next string back one fret and I put my finger there and then I also put my second finger on the um, G string on the same on the seventh fret as well and then in front of it I put my third finger on the D string eighth fret and my pinky on the B string eighth fret it's just the middle four strings Two notes are back a fret, two notes are up a fret there. But what we get is we get the E, which is the major third in the key of C, for a C dominant seventh. We get the B flat, which is the flat seventh, right? We get the D, which is the ninth, and then we get the G, which is the fifth. So it has all of the notes that you need for a dominant seventh chord, and it has the ninth in there. The only note it's missing is the root. Not a big deal if someone else is playing it. Say the bass player's playing the root. You don't have to play the root yourself. It's already being estab been established. But I love this chord sliding, sliding it around. So let's take this dominant seventh chord and let's let's go on. Let's add a little more to it. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 13th chord. So I'm gonna go back to the eighth fret here, play my E7 shape. You all know the big bar chord all the way across. So this is a C dominant seven. Uh, it looks like an E missing the pinky there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to add another note in there too. We're gonna add the 13th. So the, the, the trick is knowing that the 13th and the sixth are the same note. So I'm going to find the sixth and C. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's an A. Okay, so I'm going to try to take this chord and put an A in it somewhere. Well, my pinky on the B string at the 10th fret is an easy place to grab an A right there. I can still bar. I can still play the dominant chord. Everything I need is on the low strings. So when I add that A in there, uh, I'm not in the way of anything. Right, it just it just puts that in it basically covers up the fifth, which is fine. We don't really need the fifth all of the time. Uh, of all the notes in there, the root and the fifth, you can you can take away or not. Uh, but listen to that sound. And 
Now that's a very fancy sound. Whenever I use a 13th chord is when I'm going for very fancy stuff. To me, it's the next step up from the ninth there. So the ninth was a D I put into this chord. This is an A that I'm putting into the chord. Doesn't change the function at all. These are the same exact chords, but hey, got a neat sound. There's another way that we can get a 13th that's very easy too. Remember that James Brown sounding ninth chord where you bar across down here at the third fret for C? and you, you have your third finger barring the top three strings, the high strings, what you can do is use your pinky that's not being used and go up on the high E string and put that two frets up on the high E string of your ninth chord. Right, so there it is. There's a 13th right from that chord. Didn't have to change the chord at all. You're just adding something to the top of it. It covers up the G again. You don't really need that G so much. So we got the root, third, dominant seventh, and then we've got we've got the ninth, and then the thirteenth, the A. Uh, so in this chord, we have both the ninth and the thirteenth, and you can have it that way or or not. Either way is fine. If it's just the thirteenth or the ninth and the thirteenth, it's still called a thirteenth chord there. Okay, so there's two easy ways of getting that set. But one thing that um, comes up a lot is you might see something that says you need to play a sixth chord, C6. And people get very confused about that. What's the difference between a 13th chord and a sixth chord? The note that you add in is the same. It's the A uh, for the 13th and the sixth. If it says 13th, that means it's a dominant chord. You have a, a flat seventh in there. But if it just says C6, then you don't. You just have uh, a triad and then you add the six in. Right? So um, here is a dominant chord. Got the flat seventh in there. It's got kind of, it, it doesn't want to stay still. It wants to go somewhere. But that we would call a 13th chord. But if we, instead of we had that flat seven, we just use the root. There we go. There's our, there's a, a sixth sound too. Sometimes you'll hear something like this. It slides the, the, the D, G and B string up two and then back. Uh, here it's a ninth. When we slide it up here, the same shape, that gives the sound of a sixth, right? So we're having the same kind of sound, that, like the sixth and the thirteenth, that A note that comes in there. And then we resolve back to the ninth chord. This is an embellishment. This is kind of, uh, you know, you've got this chord for four measures and you want to do something to give it a little bit of movement, but not change the function of that. So we can add that little uh, slide up in six and you'll see that in blues all of the time. Another fancy chord <laughs> that you would see in blues is the diminished seventh chord. This is something that you hear, you might hear going from a seventh to a half step up diminished seventh chord. This is a sound. I, you hear that in blues an awful lot. Uh, and basically what this is, it's the same chord as a C dominant seventh um, with a flat nine. In fact, sometimes you can go back and forth between calling this chord a uh, C sharp diminished seventh, or you call it a C dominant seventh flat nine. Same thing, the flat nine is a half step above the root note, right? This is one of those chords that you can repeat every four frets. It's a pretty neat sound, um, but it's you can use it as an embellishment too, or as a chord substitution. The embellish you, you want to spend a little time. It's one of those things that the two chords share the same notes if you get rid of the root in the C. It's a pretty neat sound. What else do we have? We have the augmented chord. So in C, does that sound familiar? An augmented triad is played as the five chord. Uh, it's kind of like a five chord, but it's it's a little floatier sounding. It's kind of dreamy sounding there. So uh, if you find an augmented chord, chances are in a blues song, the only place you're gonna hear that is if it's the, that final five chord that wants to lead back to where everything starts again. Or it's in the very beginning of the song where it's kind of like you start on a five chord and then go to the one chord, right? So in the key of C, you do a G augmented. Now an augmented triad is root, third, and sharp five. So here's regular and here's with the sharp five. 
you hear the difference there. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to bring in the track. What we're going to do is we're going to take a very simple blues and then we're going to fancy it up with all of these chords that we found here. So I'm going to try and use all the chords that we talked about <laughs> and put them in a put them in one time here. So let, let's take a listen first to um, just the, the regular blues. So there's my C7. Goes to the four chord is an F7. Play along with it. And there's my C dominant seventh there. Now we're going to the four chord, the F7. This is measure five, the measure six. It's a four chord back to the one chord. I'm just playing the simplest versions that I have. G7 to F7 and then back to C7. And a G7 at the end there. I'm gonna go through these chords. I'm gonna tell you every one of these chords that I'm adding in, and then we'll play along with the track with those right there. So what we're gonna do is on our C7 chord, we're gonna leave that alone for the first measure. Next, we're gonna to go to our F7 chord. I'm gonna use this as an F9. Remember I said that the ninth chords and the 13th chords are interchangeable with a regular seventh chord. So I'm gonna play an F9, but only for two beats. At the next part, I'm gonna turn that into our diminished seventh chord, or maybe an F7, or an F7 flat nine. So F sharp diminished or F7 flat and nine. So here what that does, so we have one chord to the quick four and then the diminished. It leads us back to that seventh chord. So that's something that we can do on top of that to embellish this and make it pretty nice. And that's back to our one chord. This is C7. Now what we have in a regular blues, you have B, uh, measure two and measure three. And then in measure four, you go to an, in C and F7, the four chord. I'm going to set that up using a minor seventh and then a dominant C dominant seventh. It takes your ear out of key for a little bit. It's like you're moving to the key of F. It's a two, five, one in F. So here's our four chord, the F7. I set it up with that. I'll play from the beginning there. C, two. Here's our quick four with the diminished back to the one chord. Now you know that four is coming, four chords coming up. Did you hear how I set that up with the two five in the key of F now? That's a neat sound. I'm sure you've heard it in different blues songs before, but now we're at our four chord, the F chord. This is uh, measure five and I'm going to do the the diminished again, same trick, but this time over a whole measure there. So measure five to measure six. So one, boom, 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 boom. Add interest and a little bit of um, tension back to the one chord. And I'll just stay on the one chord. So now we're back to a G7. Here's the five chord. F7 for the four chord. That's a ninth. I'm just playing right there. And then the one chord. And here's our turnaround, the augmented chord. So now I'm gonna play this track again for you. The first time through will be the regular blues, and then the second time through, you're gonna have all of the new chords that we put in. Take a listen. So that's just one to four, and then back to one. That's called a quick four when you go to the four chord in the second measure. So here's our F7, the four chord. Back to the one chord. Here comes the five chord, G7. And we'll do an F7. And back to C7. And then a G7. 
But here we go and add it in our fancy chords here. So one chord is C7, just regular. Now we're gonna go to an F9, F sharp diminished, back to our C7. Here's our 2, 5, 1, G minor 7, to C dominant 7, hit our F9, F sharp diminished, back to C dominant 7th is 1 chord. Our G dominant 7th, I'm going to play that F9 again, I like the F9 in the 4th position, back to the 1 chord. Augmented. So there you go, we took our common chords, we made them a little bit fancier, uh, and then we found cool places to throw them in a blues that gives a little bit of uh, extended harmony. Uh, something sounds a little more sophisticated than just going for one, four to five, and I think this is something you're gonna have a lot of fun with. And like I said, if you're listening in the car, Head on over to YouTube, take a look at the video, and you can see exactly everything I did. Did my best to explain it for those who are just listening. Make sure you get my Cyber Monday deal. It is the $7 Chord Elevation Toolkit. It is packed full of good stuff. It's over at PlayGuitarAcademy.com forward slash Chord Elevation Toolkit. I'm going to call it. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. That's a wrap. <laughs> Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. And if you have benefited from this podcast, please leave a favorable Apple Podcast review. It's the best way to make sure we get this very valuable content to more guitar players around the world. And if more help, structure, and results in your playing sound good to you, come visit me over at Play Guitar Academy. There's a lot of fun stuff over there. I'm adding new stuff all the time, and I think it would be awesome to see you progress. I'd love to see it. And I'm going to go ahead and say thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next episode.